A very good morning to all my dear friends. I am Prashant Mavani. I hope you all are doing good. Today is 8th May 2020. Day is Friday. Let's start our discussion with this quote by Paulo Coelho. Be brave. Take risks. Nothing can substitute experience. To get experience as well, you have to take some risks, right? And to take some risks, you have to be brave. So to get some experience, you have to step out of your comfort zone. then only you will know something that you don't know now and when you know something that you don't know now that's what experience is all about isn't it so think about it with this difference i would like to introduce all of you to our smart course which is designed by best faculties of our country this smart course covers both pre and mains examination emi option is also available and to find out more about it do download our mobile application on your phone friends to download the pdf of today's lecture do check out my telegram channel you can follow me on facebook please make sure that you share this lecture with other students hit the like button if you have learned something from today's discussion and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel on our table we have four important articles uh, first one is about visakhapatnam tragedy second one is about uh, covid-19 coronavirus third is about election very important article written by former election commissioner of india and um, then we have fourth one is about water so visakhapatnam i'm sure you are aware about this news item that uh, a disastrous leak of a, tex- a toxic chemical has killed many people and where you find visakhapatnam on your eastern coast right this is bay of bengal this is our eastern coast and this is visakhapatnam city uh, this infographic is from times of india right uh, so the tragedy 11 people killed and more than 1000 fell ill after toxic styrene gas leaked from lg polymers pra- plant around 2:30 am uh, 2:30 am 7th may 2:30 am right keep this thing in mind So the company is LG Polymers uh, after 43 days of uh, shutdown it came into operation on 4th May and on 7th May early morning this uh, styrene gas got leaked from this company and uh, you know people living around 3 to 5 kilometers radius they were they they were complaining of uh, vomiting headache not feeling well eye irritation skin rashes and many fell unconscious and as you can see that more than 11 have died and um, so many kids so many people are uh, in hospital at present uh, cattle dogs cats perished as well even trees are affected because of this toxic chemical it is also said that uh, this uh, as per who international agency for research on cancer it is a possible cancer causing agent as well this styrene gas is used for uh, making you know those cups and plastic bottles uh, so this styrofoam cups that we use for tea coffee soft drinks so they are made from this chemical called uh, styrene and uh, we need to do more research on this thing the number of uh, studies on styrene um, styrene's clinical neurotoxicity remains low so more studies are required on this thing like its long term impact on human body and things like that right now this is not the first time right uh, we have seen bigger disasters as well and the biggest one that i can remember or we can remember is uh, 1984's uh, bhopal gas Uh, tragedy uh, can you give me the name of the company that was involved in this bhopal gas tragedy of 1984 uh, stick your answer in the comment section now uh, as i told you like we know we have this big cases like bhopal gas tragedy and we have uh, to be honest cases going on you know regularly almost regularly i have few examples of yesterday as well and this is not the first time that we find this sort of th- uh, things taking place in our country few months ago we were talking about uh, remember uh, if you are a regular student then you will uh, recall this thing that uh, we were talking about shiva kashi uh, this uh, f- um, firecrackers uh, producing city of our of our country uh, where you find uh, we have all these firecrackers right it is one of the biggest i think in the world as well uh, firecracker firecracker producing place in the world so fire incidents are quite common over there and this is not just about uh, firecrackers you find this sort of things in various different factories 
As far as this uh, styrene is concerned, uh, right, uh, it is part of this uh, manufacture, storage and import of hazardous chemicals rules of 1989. And you have this uh, strict norms how to handle it and how to store it. So the big question is, who is responsible for this thing? Uh, it is said in news items that uh, unskilled people, uh, because uh, not everyone, their experts were not able to reach this factory because of this lockdown. So unskilled people were running this uh, factory for uh, from last few days, right? For a few hours or from last few days. I think uh, not just those people or, of course, uh, the government has booked a case against this uh, LG Polymers, this company. Uh, culpable homicide case has been filed. We should also file a case or there should be a thorough investigation on those public authorities as well. On those public authorities who have given a green signal. We have dedicated the departments, right? So why no one is, why only after incidents we get active? Why only after incident? Why we are learning, why we are not proactive? Why it is always this sort of tragedies? After that, only we open our eyes. And then that eyes as well are open for a few weeks only. Do you know, yesterday we saw two more incidents. Uh, one was in Chhattisgarh's uh, paper mill. A gas got leaked over there. And then we have this uh, Navelli Lignite uh, Corporation. Uh, there was an explosion in a boiler. And this are, this, this are the things that I was talking about. It's... It's very common in our country and it's a matter of shame as well. Even today, right, uh, the way we operate our factories, we don't, we don't have that culture um, to, to, to give uh, priority to health and safety. So many things that we do, like if you observe a construction site as well, then as well you will know that hardly you will see someone wearing a hard top safety helmet and a uh, uh, that safety shoes that you need so that uh, in case if there is a break or something drops on your uh, on your foot you don't uh, means it will not crush your toes but you don't find this sort of things are not given because it's all about uh, you know uh, cutting down cost and this of uh, it's unfortunate that we see these things as cost rather than a necessity one thing that the uh, state government should do is victims and families should get uh, proper uh, compensation as well as they should get uh, best possible healthcare facility. Those people who are infected by this or they are, you know, are, uh, are not well because of this gas leakage, uh, they should get best health care. And uh, we are going to, we are basically trying to step out or exit this lockdown and this sort of things we may find in various different factories around our country. So it is very important that we take this whole incident as an eye-opener. We should learn from this incident. And I'm sure, I'm sure we will. Uh, many, uh, many district uh, authorities and many local level authorities, they will learn lesson from it. But I'm sure we will find more cases like this. And unfortunately, we will find it because... As I told you, right, uh, safety is something that we don't take seriously. And then every, you know, even innocent people, they have to pay price for this thing. So this is very unfortunate. And uh, let's hope for the early recovery of all those people who are affected by this thing. Moving on to, and one more point, of course, uh, I cannot miss this one, one of the most important point. You know, this thing is also going on in news that uh, we are trying to attract so many companies uh, from China. We want to attract all those companies into our country. If you have someone living in European nations, if you have someone living in, at present, USA is very bad, right? Uh, but if you, if you ask someone who is living in Australia, New Zealand, or European nations, or in any developed country, for them... For those businesses who are trying to invest or who are looking forward to invest in India, this sort of things, this sort of uh, cases, this leakages and lack of health and safety is a big nightmare for them. They cannot comprehend, they cannot understand why we are so uh, careless, you know. So because they have this safety protocols, they have, uh, you know, they give this even in schools as well, their whole culture, if you, if you see schools, 
um, developed nations, Australia and other countries, you will find there are fire exits. Uh, fire exits. They have this uh, uh, dedicated point where if something goes wrong, like if there is an earthquake or fire or any sort of thing, then there is a point where you have to gather. You know, you will find signs and everything. Just in schools means hardly anything happens over there then as well. You know, this is this is the reason why you find this thing. There are small kids. They are used to with this. And when they, in future, when they are adults, when they work in a factory, when they when they are business people, you know, they will they will have this thing as 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 their part of their culture that they will also look for all these safety things. They cannot ignore it. So this is the reason why they take this health and safety so seriously. And I think we should as well do the same thing. So we won't be able to attract that much money or investment if if we are careless in 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 health and safety. Moving on to next item, a uh, slow but steady. This one is about uh, figures. This one is not just about figures, but uh, this one is about figure. Like on sixth May twenty twenty, total cases of coronavirus in our country fifty two thousand four hundred and sixty nine. So far, one thousand seven hundred and seventy one have succumbed to this coronavirus or COVID-19. I just want you guys to pay attention to this fact as well, that if you compare coronavirus figures with road accidents, road accidents in our country, every year we see 150,000 people, right? They die on our roads, Indian roads, right? 150,000 people. As far as tuberculosis figures are concerned, TB kills 4,35,000 people every year in our country. One, uh, four, three, five, triple zero, right? Now compare these figures with uh, coronavirus. I'm not saying that we should not take coronavirus seriously. Of course, we have to. We should take it seriously, right? Uh, we need to do everything that is possible like uh, social distancing, uh, wearing proper uh, masks or covering your face, right? Uh, covering your mouth and nose, of course. So uh, washing your hands, uh, hygiene etiquettes, these are the things that we need to, every one of us uh, should do, right? Uh, this is absolutely important in normal days as well. Like, But lockdown is not going to be a permanent thing. It means lockdown is important, right lockdown has played its role uh, lockdown has given us time to be honest right the biggest thing that we got from lockdown is time time to think time to produce more items uh, or medicines time to plan uh, time to take actions time to do more tests and other things so the biggest benefit of lockdown has been these things but now we have to understand that uh, there are other reasons as well why people die in our country. There are so many people, they are suffering from other diseases and they are not getting proper facilities because of this lockdown, one thing. Uh, second thing is uh, more people die because of road accidents, because of TB and other diseases in our country. So again, coronavirus is a big threat, but there are other diseases. Uh, they have been with us for a very long period of time. So... Following all these social etiquettes, we should open up, right? We need to get rid of this lockdown because this is a reality as well for our country that more people will die of hunger, more people will die of poverty in our country than coronavirus. In foreign countries, in UK, France, Germany, Turkey, Italy, Spain, over there, people are dying because of coronavirus, but they don't have this issue of hunger and other things. But in our country, so many people are dying because of this hunger and poverty and other things. So we need to think about it, right? Uh, we have finally entered, which is very sad, in the list of top 15 countries with the highest number of people infected by novel coronavirus. And I think the more tests we will do, the more numbers are going to come out. But we have a younger population here in our country, right? Uh, so in uh, fatality rate as well, if you compare it with Western world and other countries, then you'll find that Indians are doing quite well. A recovery is also quite great. So this is the right time to open up. If we see other countries, then uh, USA has 32.7% of uh, uh, global cases, 1.2 million plus cases in USA alone. Then you have Italy, Spain, UK, France, Germany, uh, Turkey, Iran. 
Uh, their cases are uh, slowing down a little bit. Uh, Russia and Brazil are on the same page where India is. And as I told you, right, lockdown might have been necessary, but it is not sufficient. The mantra should be that uh, contract tracing and testing as many people as possible. We should do what Korea has done. Community testing and surveillance. Uh, Maharashtra and Gujarat, they are doing quite well as far as testing is concerned. Their tests are uh, more than uh, national average. Uh, West Bengal and Madhya Pradesh, they are poor in, in, in testing. Their average is less than national average average we need smart nimble approach like uh, um, working with government government and society working with each other following all these norms and rules and regulations and then businesses uh, start businesses as quick as possible simple as that moving on to next item this one is a very interesting well, as well as important article there are so many things that you will learn from this one it is written by Shy Qureshi uh, who is a former chief election commissioner of our country and uh, is talking about this whole election thing uh, or this whole issue of uh, politics in Madhya Pradesh. So first of all, you have to understand this thing. I have added this thing. This is one extra point, but it will help you to understand this whole article. So we have article 164 and then you have article, sub-article 4 as well. So the constitu in our constitution, it is clearly given that a minister who for any period of six consecutive months is not a member of legislature of uh, the state shall at the expiration of that period ceases to be a minister. So I'm not sure if you are aware about this thing, but uh, anyone can become prime minister. You can become chief minister as well. Uh, you can become um union minister you can become state minister right the only condition is that let's say if you are made prime minister right uh, you take oath and now you are new prime minister of our country so if you are not member of uh, rajya sabha or lok sabha then as well it's okay but as on the date when you take this oath in six months time you have to get elected uh, either from Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha or let's say nominated. You should basically become a member of Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha. You should be MP in six months time. And same thing happens with chief minister or a state minister, right? Uh, you have to get elected or nominated. You should basically be a member of, in most states we have legislative assembly, right? So you should become MLA in six months time or we have uh, uh, MLC, uh, that is uh, legislative council right vidhan parishad so member of legislative mlc or mla in six months time so maharashtra is a state they have this bicameral system where they have upper house and lower house upper house is legislative council and lower house is legislative assembly so these are some basic things i'm sure you would be aware about right now mr thakre took off on 28th november 2019 he was supposed to get elected or become member of uh, legislative assembly or mlc or mla in six months time uh, before 27th may but uh, elections that were going to take place uh, were cancelled because of this coronavirus episode ec that is election commission uh, postponed this uh, election indefinitely uh, they can do this thing under this uh, article uh, 324 of constitution and then you have this rp act this representation of people act of 1951 section 153 empowers election commission to do this thing indefinitely but this applies to only two places indefinitely you can do it uh, for rajya sabha election or legislative uh, legislative council right upper house only you can for upper house elections can can be postponed for indefinite uh, period for uh, lok sabha as well as for uh, uh, legislative assembly you cannot do that thing because we have supreme court orders as well and this is not fair too i will talk about it in a few minutes time so the only option that was left because this op this thing was cancelled this election so the only option was left was nomination route because on one side there was coronavirus thing and the other side uh, all other legal options were getting over so the government the cabinet decided that uh, governor should nominate mr thakre in legislative council right just like rajya sabha i have one question for you how many members can be uh, nominated by president in rajya sabha 
this is your question you know in the same way governor as well can nominate uh, members in legislative council but the governor was not happy with it ba basically government did nothing governor did nothing for a fortnight nearly 15 days so other options uh, were discussed like uh, making his son Uddhav Thakre's son is MLA so how about making him CM and other things something like uh, back in 1997 uh, Lalu Prasad the other one there are other cases as well uh, when Lalu was disqualified what he did uh, he made uh, Rabri Devi uh, he placed her um, in his place you know he, he made La Rabri Devi as the chief minister of Bihar back in 1997 so the Prime Minister's intervention and finally Prime Minister intervened and uh, this election commission's uh, prompt action. After all these things, this whole episode got over and now it is decided that on 21st May, uh, nine legislative council seats uh, will face election. It will, it will see polls, right? Elections will take place. And in legislative councils, uh, people don't vote, right? It's uh, indirect voting. So 288 members of uh, Vidhan Sabha, they will vote. So it's not going to be that difficult for election commission to arrange uh, a poll in which you have just 288 members who are part of this electoral college, right? So it's going to be that easy for... But the problem is that uh, in future, like in uh, before uh, uh, November 20. Uh, 29th November, Bihar has to go for assembly election. Then you have uh, West Bengal next year, Assam, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Puducherry. And it is said that uh, this coronavirus will stay with us around two years or more than that. As I told you, Rajya Sabha Legislative Council elections, you can postpone it uh, indefinitely, but you cannot do the same thing with legislative assembly or Lok Sabha elections. Uh, you can, the maximum is six months. Right, and uh, there are a few conditions like if there is emergency, then yes, you can go ahead, you can extend it for one year and then six months extra after emergency. But emergency is allowed only for two things security and sovereignty. If, if there is a threat to security and sovereignty of our country, then that is state of emergency, not epidemic and pandemic. Second option is a president's rule, right? But uh, that is again not means there is one government over there, and there are you can go ahead with elections. So that is something that we cannot do, or the government cannot do. So the best thing that is suggested by uh, S.Y. Qureshi is that uh, we should do what South Korea did. South Korea had a full, proper election amid this coronavirus. So what they did, they maintained physical distancing, they wore gloves, masks and hand sanitizers, waters, uh, temperatures were checked on arrival at the booths and uh, those with 99.5 degree Fahrenheit or more were uh, sent to booths in scheduled, beg uh, your uh, pardon, uh, secluded areas. Uh, older voters, we have to, you know, go out. Means we have to think about uh, this uh, mobile ballot boxes, proxy voting, postal voting. Uh, those in self quarantine, uh, they should be given extra time so that uh, they can vote after 6 p.m. And the main goal of EC is no voter left behind. This is going to be a bit difficult. It's going to be easy for this 288 members, but for future elections, if coronavirus is with us, and I think it is going to stay with us for a bit of time, then it is better to. Uh, do everything that we can and this is going to be bring of course a big challenges for election commission but i think uh, we will be all right moving on to water right water wisdom during a pandemic uh, 22nd march is celebrated as as water world water day around the world it's about awareness water is a common pool natural resource right it belongs to every one of us when i say everyone i don't mean to say just human beings i'm talking about ecosystems biodiversity each and every living organism is, uh, you know, is, uh, you can say, owner of this. We all are owner of this water and natural resources, and we have to use it uh, judiciously, of course. It is important for our food security, for our economy, for our society. Uh, this year's theme is water and climate change. And I think one of the main reasons is now policymakers, they want to draw our attention to this impact of climate change on water. Uh, when your atmosphere, when the climate is more warmer, it can uh, evaporate more water from your land and from your oceans and uh, air as well. Atmosphere too will hold more water, roughly 4% more uh, 
then this will create a situation where dry areas will become more drier and wet areas will become more wet more wet you know they will get more rainfall heavy rainfall runoff which is again bad and uh, those areas drought areas are again more drier area means more losses and more uh, damage to our health sanitation and everything our whole industry our society economy everything will collapse if you have uh, heavy rainfalls and if you have no rainfalls in both these extreme conditions we have this national action plan on climate change uh, we, where we have eight national missions and water is also of course part of this thing what we need now is we need to engage local governments corporates ngos and individuals as well to achieve one of the sdg one of the most important sdg that is clean water and sanitation like without water you cannot get rid of poverty food health quality education all these things right water is life as we all know and if we go back to our tradition then we find uh, you know ancient buildings we find a rich tradition and culture of uh, water wisdom water conservation we need to do the same thing uh, rain water harvesting using water judiciously not wasting it recycling more and more water we can learn so many things from israel israel is a country that is means outstanding when it comes to water so many things this drip irrigation and recycling all these things you know drip irrigation was invented in israel there are other things as well it basically israel is similar to rajasthan but then as well israel is producing citrus fruits and vegetables and it is exporting fruits and vegetables can you imagine it is using as less water as possible and it is producing more things so so many things that we can learn from israel i have one more infographic this one is of course this few points in today's discussion they are add-ons but they are important so this one i found a few months ago uh, maybe last year or maybe year before that i'm not sure but it i was holding this picture means it was there in my computer so i thought let me share it with you guys so see here uh, things were quite good per capita water was quite high in 51 and 1995 but then you can see a drastic drop and today we are in this water stressed range where per capita availability is 1700 cubic meter or less that means uh, you are facing water stress you are living in a condition that is water stressed and uh, in future after 1951 we will be in you can say water scarce uh, situation so demand of water is rising with population and uh, supply is getting less and less so there is a big mismatch here then you have this news items uh, india registers uh, 3561 new cases 89 deaths in a day sbi cuts uh, lending rate fdi uh, uh, fd that is fixed deposit interest beta flags uh, tuberculosis in captive animal and human can also get it from elephants uh, vande bharat mission is on India taking all possible steps has been said by Prime Minister Modi, and he wished the whole world and the country uh, on this uh, Buddha Purnima celebration. Uh, Naiku uh, was under radar for more than six months time, and IMD includes POK in weather forecast. Uh, Gilgit, Baltistan, and Muzaffarabad is part of IMD's uh, weather forecast, and Pakistan is not happy about it. But what? we can do about it right this is our part means uh, this get baltistan and muzaffarabad it is and uh, pakistan's control but it is part of our country four states went uh, want a up uh, laborers to stay 40 dollar uh, will be charged for sea evacuation by navy and uh, usa appreciates role of india in afghanistan and that's everything in today's uh, discussion thank you very much for watching this video share this video with other students god bless you all jai hind